Hi everyone, this is Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. This is block number six of the Beginner's Botanical Quilt. There will be nine different blocks in this quilt. To view all of the blocks in this quilt, play this video until a green screen appears and then click on the link in the upper left hand corner. Use up your scrap fabrics before buying new fabric. I recommend you buy anywhere from one eighth of a yard to one third yard or buy fat quarters. Let's get started. This is the block layout. All of the dark lines are the seams in between each square. The letters represent the color of the fabric. So the green is identified as fabric A. The yellow or gold is represented by fabric B and C is the background fabric. If you need instructions on how to cut out quilt fabric, click on the link in the upper right hand corner, Tips for Cutting Quilt Fabric number two. Out of fabric A, the green, you'll need two three inch squares, two two and a half inch squares. Fabric B, the gold fabric, you'll need 12 two and a half inch squares, two three inch squares. Fabric C, the background, two two and a half inch squares, four three inch squares, and two two and a half inch squares. This is the background, and on the four three inch squares, draw a line from corner to corner. So place your ruler on there, line up those corners, and draw a line. Then take your two green three inch squares and your two yellow three inch squares and place one background fabric front side together on each of them. Then stitch one quarter inch outside of the line. So here's your center line. Go out that way, stitch a quarter of an inch. Go out this way and stitch a quarter of an inch. Then press all four of the squares. Cut them in half. So place your ruler back on that line and cut. At your ironing board, place them to where the darkest fabric is facing up. Open them up, unfold, and press the seam. What you're doing is you're pressing this seam towards the darkest fabric. On all eight half square triangles, you're going to cut them down to size two and a half inches square. On your ruler, there is a diagonal line that goes from corner to corner. So you're going to place that diagonal line on top of the seam. Try to have a little bit of fabric extending out past these two edges and past the two and a half inch lines on your ruler. So there's a little bit out. There should be if you've done this correctly. Once you've got it all lined up and it's good to go, go ahead and cut two sides and cut. Now take this corner and bring it around to the other side. Again, place the diagonal line back on top of the seam. Lay it on there. Place the two and a half inch uh, lines on your ruler right on the two previously cut edges over here. And then cut your last two sides. Do this on all eight of your half square triangles. And this is what they should look like when they're all done. Place all of the squares and triangles in this layout. Up here you have two background squares that are two and a half inches, two of your half square triangles of the green, Here's this is half square triangles on each side, and two green solid squares, and then you have your half square triangles here at the uh, top of the body of the pineapple and at the bottom fill the rest in with two and a half inch squares. 
Then take each row and stitch the squares together. So bring them front sides together, stitch a quarter of an inch seam, unfold, add on the next square, stitch a quarter of an inch seam, go to the next one, stitch a quarter of an inch seam. And again, after stitching this row, go to the next row and the next row till you have all of the rows stitched together. After stitching, then press the seams on the back side. So I turn the first one under and press, and then lift, press, lift, press. Then to get all the seams going in one direction, I keep the block slightly lifted, and I'm going to push against the seams until I've got them all pressed going in the same direction. And then check on the back side just to make sure they're all going in one direction. While you are pressing the seams all in one direction, keep in mind that each row, the seams are going in the opposite direction of each other. This row is going this way, then this way, this way, and they're just zigzagging back and forth all the way down. After all your pressing is done, stitch the rows together. So bring the first two rows together. And one of the things that you make sure you need to do is to match the seams. So get those seams right up against each other, uh, press on it, and if it feels flat, fairly flat, then you've got it locked in there. And that means that the seam on the bottom is going in the opposite direction than the seam on top. And I would definitely put a pin there to hold these. So continue going across, matching up your seams. Once you've got them all pinned, then go ahead and stitch one quarter inch seam all along here. And continue adding the rows on making sure you match those seams. It's very, very important until you have all of your rows stitched together. After stitching all the rows together, then press your seams on the back side. So I turn the first row under and press, and then open it up, press the second row, and continue until you've got all of the rows pressed. Now unfold it and you're going to press all of your rows going in the same direction. So I like to keep the block lifted a little bit and I just push against those seams working my way all the way down the block. Before you stitch the last two pieces on, I would measure this to see if you're on track, if you're right where you should be. This should measure eight and a half inches this way by 12 and a half inches this way. So just place your ruler on top, line it up, and see where you are. Now my edges are a little jagged. Trim anything off that's sticking way out, unless it's going to dramatically change what your block looks like. But if you just have a few little pieces sticking out, I would just go ahead and trim it off. If you're way off, I would stop, take those sections apart that look like they're not correct, and find out what happened. Maybe your seam allowance was incorrect, or maybe the fabric in that little area was cut incorrect. After you've got all of this part up to where you should be, take your last two strips, which are 12 and a half inches long by two and a half inches wide, stitch both of them on, one quarter inch seam, press them on the back side, unfold, and press on top, and I suggest that you press these seams towards the outside strip. After you've got all the pressing done, I would check it again just to see where you are to see if it is close to that 12 and a half inch square. What you want to do is, if your blocks are close to that 12 and a half inch square, don't do your final squaring. Don't trim anything. 
don't try to change anything as long as you're real real close then after all of your blocks are completed you'll do your final squaring and I would really like you to watch another video it's called how to square a quilt block the link is appearing in the upper right hand corner and that will answer a lot of your questions about getting all your blocks to come up to the same size. If you have been quilting for a while and you are up to a challenge, I'm going to show you very quickly another version of this pineapple block. So you'll notice this is almost all solid squares. There are just a few half square triangles. So if you want a real challenge, here's another version of the same block. Everything is a half square triangle. So you're just going to make a lot more half square triangles and it makes the block even more interesting. But be careful because you've got all of these little pieces that you're trying to stitch together. The chances of making errors are much greater. So you want to check and recheck every step of the way. But it is a beautiful block when you do all half square triangles. For more quilting projects, play this video until a green screen appears and then click on the links. If you like this video, would you please click on thumbs up and don't forget to click on that share button to share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go to that button in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to enter your email address and click on the little bell so you receive email notifications to your phone. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, see you next time and happy sewing!